Hi, everyone, from Cincinnati. This is Jerry Doggett along with Vin Scully, and here we are at Riverfront Stadium for the game between the Dodgers and the Cincinnati Reds. This broadcast is presented with the permission of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the express written permission of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated is prohibited. Well, we're a little late, but here we are at opening day in Cincinnati. The Dodgers and the Cincinnati Reds and all of baseball beginning their opening days this Saturday after about a 10-day delay because of the players' strike. But it's all over, it's all behind us, and we'd hope now, looking to the skies, that the weatherman will cooperate and give us a good day for the ball game. As of the moment, it is a dreary and dismal day, and it might uh, bring us some showers a little later on. We'll have more of the opening ceremonies and the starting lineups right after this message. Here at Cincinnati, we've had scattered showers yesterday and today, and the weatherman says it might rain again today. It looks like it could, but at least we keep our fingers crossed and hope that the weatherman will relent and get the game going. Starting pitchers today will be Jack Billingham, late of the Houston Astros, and Don Sutton. Sutton, 17-game winner last year, and Billingham won 10 and lost 16 for the Houston Astros. He was involved, of course, in the big trade between the Reds and the Astros. Billingham, 1-4 and four against the Dodgers last year. He is 3-6 and six lifetime. And for Don Sutton, a 1-1 one one record last year against the Reds and an 8-10 and ten lifetime mark. Here are the batting orders for the opening game of the 1972 season. For the Dodgers, at shortstop, Maury Wills. At first base, Bill Buckner. In center field, Willie Davis. In right field, Frank Robinson. At second base will be Jimmy Lefevre. In left field for the Dodgers will be Willie Crawford. Billy Grabarkowitz will be at third base. And Don Sutton to do the pitching. For Cincinnati, Pete Rose will be in left. Joe Morgan will be at second. And now the Reds come out of the dugout as the umpires go to their stations. Batting third for the Reds will be Bobby Tolan in center field. Johnny Bench will bat fourth and do the catching. Tony Perez will be at first base. Dennis Menke at third base. Cesar Geronimo will be in right field. Dave Concepcion is at shortstop. And big Jack Billingham will be on the mound to do the pitching. The umpires for the ball game today will be veteran Tom Gorman behind the plate. Billy Williams at first base. At second base will be John McSherry. And a newcomer to the league from the International League making his debut at third base will be Frank Pulley, P-U-L-L-I. So we have one new umpire making his Major League debut today. And otherwise, he will be the only rookie on the field. Mostly veteran players for both sides out there today, although there might be some newcomers in the case of Geronimo over from the Houston Ball Club here to the Reds. Jack Billingham, the ex-Dodger, warming up now. Jack was very surprised that he drew the opening day assignment. Had the Dodgers and the Reds opened last week in Los Angeles, of course, the Reds would have opened on a Wednesday here against Houston. The Dodgers had figured that they would see Don Gullett. They will not see Gullett in this series. Tomorrow it will be Gary Nolan against Al Downing. And now we're all set. Time to play ball. The 1972 baseball season is underway from Cincinnati. Maury Will steps into the batter's box, and away we go. For Maury, this is his tenth opening game as a Dodger. Only Maury and Willie Davis for the Dodgers will be in ten openers. The windup by Billingham, the first pitch is fouled away upstairs, out of play, and it's strike one, and the ball game is underway. Maury Wills, switch hitting, batting from the left side. Maury first started the Dodgers season in 1960. Of course, he missed a couple when he was out traded. A bouncing ball to the left side at shortstop Concepcion. Off balance play in time. Wills out on a slow runner to short, and a nice play by the shortstop Concepcion, and here's Billy Buckner coming to bat. Billy Buckner is playing at first base today for several reasons. He had an excellent spring. He had a good year last year. Wes Parker has been busy with the players' committee in the strike as the player representative, so he has not had a chance to stay in shape. So Buckner gets the nod today, and surprisingly enough for Buckner, this is his third starting assignment in an opening game for the Dodgers. Breaking ball is a strike in at the belt, 0-1. Buckner in 1970 started in left field. In 1971, he started in right field. And here in his third start, he is at first base. 
And it's kind of uh, surprising to realize that Buckner now is making his third opener. Fastball inside around the knees, and the count goes to one ball and one strike. There are several other openers, of course, on tap. All of baseball opens today. There are a few night games. We'll have a rundown of the complete schedule as light raindrops now come down here at Cincinnati. Buckner fouls one away on a check swing. Elsewhere in the National League schedule today, Pittsburgh is at New York. Philadelphia at Chicago. Montreal at St. Louis. The Giants are at Houston tonight. Atlanta at San Diego tonight. In the American League, New York at Baltimore. Milwaukee at Cleveland. Boston at Detroit. Chicago at Kansas City. Night games. Minnesota at Oakland. That's actually a late afternoon game. There's a ground ball to the right side. Near second. Morgan was right up with it. Throws to first in time. And down goes Billy Buckner. Two away. The lone night game on the American League schedule will be in Anaheim where the new Texas team will take on the Angels and our best wishes to Del Rice and his Angels as they open at home at Anaheim tonight. And to Del Rice and a new job, congratulations and good luck. Two down now as Willie Davis comes up and for Willie, this is his 10th opener. Willie was first in an opening lineup for the Dodgers in 1961. Drives one to deep left field away back. This ball is off the wall. The three dog is around first, heads for second, rolls up with the ball, brings it back in and Davis has a stand-up double. So Willie Davis going the opposite way. Drove one to left field for a two-base hit. Willie Davis had a remarkable spring. He had one of the best springs of his career. He wound up batting 391, two doubles, four triples, four home runs. And so Willie, who was a little bit reluctant to work out while the players were on strike, not reluctant, but did not uh, feel that he needed as much as some of the others, starts off right where he left off when the last exhibition game was played a couple of weeks ago in Albuquerque. Here's Frank Robinson, and the noise you heard in the background, of course, is occasioned by Robbie stepping into the batter's box. Robbie was a great favorite here in Cincinnati before being traded away to the Orioles in 1965. He's up now, facing Billingham, and the pitch to Robbie is a breaking ball for a strike. Robinson was with this ball club as a rookie back in 1956, so he's been in a lot of openers for the Reds. He was in at least six, perhaps more. They only logged them back as far as 1960. Curve is inside for ball, and the count goes to one and one to Robinson. Trying to get the Dodgers on the scoreboard now after a two-out double by Willie Davis, who's standing at second base. So Davis now trying to get a lead. Just a very light, fine mist coming down. Umbrellas have popped open here. A huge crowd of not capacity, but about 40,000 or more for the ball game today. Robbie grounds one at the middle, base hit. Here comes Willie Davis around third. He will score, and the Dodgers take the lead one to nothing. As Robinson opens up with a single in the center field, and the Dodgers have a run. Most of the Cincinnati fans were very unhappy when Frank Robinson was traded away by the then the club owner, Bill DeWitt. And his arrival here in Cincinnati today was greeted with many cheers, and now Robinson drives in a run, and the Dodgers are on the board, one to nothing. Jimmy Lefebvre, the batter, hit 245 last year, and Jimmy had a sensational spring. He hit 548, he had 17 hits in 10 spring games, and he nailed down the second base job at least here at the start. Lefebvre waiting as Billingham delivers, and Jimmy takes a breaking ball for a strike. Lefebvre was one of the ringleaders as far as keeping the players together during the strike. He organized workouts, in the West L.A. sector around Mar Vista. And he was kind of the captain of that crew out there. Claude Osteen had a Fullerton crew working out at Cal State Fullerton for the players who lived in the eastern area and in the Orange County sector. Lefebvre takes a strike at the knees and it's a nothing and two count to Jimmy. On deck, Willie Crawford. The Dodgers have a run on a two-out double by Davis and a single by Robinson. Now the pitch on the way, outside with the fastball. The count goes to a ball and two strikes. Billingham, an ex-Dodger, has not had much luck with the Dodgers. He was one and four with them last year. His lifetime record, three and six. Jack is primarily a sinker ball pitcher. And he began as a relief pitcher. Now he's come into prominence as a starter. There's a swing and a fly ball looped into center field. Tolan sliding over and Bobby makes the catch for the up. Well, the Fever's out on the drive into center field, handled by Tolan. Side out, the Dodgers show one run, two hits, Leave a man and the score at the end of a half inning of play in our first game of the year. The Dodgers won, the Reds coming up. It's the water that makes it only beer. It's the water and the hot
Now Don Sutton will try it out. Sutton on the mound, warming up with catcher Duke Sims. Buckner at first, and Lefevre's at second, Wills at short, Grabarkowitz at third. Crawford in left, Davis in center, and around in right field is Frank Robinson. It'll be Pete Rose, Joe Morgan, and Bobby Tolan, the first three against Don Sutton. The Dodgers, of course, made a last-minute deal, and that was the topic of the conversation on the airplane as the Dodgers flew in from Los Angeles after their workout yesterday. They, of course, have acquired catcher Dick Deets from the San Francisco Giants. Deets has been an all-star catcher. The Dodgers obtained him on waivers, and that was the cause of all the comment. They could not believe they could pick up a catcher of the caliber of Deets or a player of that caliber for the waiver price, but they have. Now Sutton ready with his first pitch of the game. Fastball low, ball one to Pete Rose. Rose is also playing in his 10th opening game. So Pete has been around a long time, and it seems just like a short while when he was an outstanding rookie player with the Cincinnati ball club. Don Sutton checks signs again. The wind-up and the pitch on the way to Rose. Fly ball foul down the left field line. It's out of play. Rose began with the Reds in 1963. At second base, he played second base through the 1965 season. Then in 66, he opened in left field and played left field as a starter for two years. And then opened in right field in 1968, center field in 69, right field in 70, center field in 71, and now he's back in left field here in 72. So for Rose, this is his 10th opener and his 10th consecutive opener. No Dodger has a long string going. We've mentioned that Wills and Davis are opening in their 10th seasons also, but those strings were interrupted. Strike two, the count. One ball and two strikes to Rose. Switch hitter batting left against Don Sutton. 17 and 12 last year. Pitch on the way. Fly ball to left field. Coming up is Crawford. Still coming, still coming. Dive can't get it. The ball bounces at his feet. Rose is around and on his his second. Turns there and holds up on a double down the left field line. So for the Reds, Pete Rose loops one in the left. Crawford appeared to be a little fooled on the ball. The breeze is blowing to left, and Willie hesitated a couple of times in coming after the ball, and then made a grab at it at his knees, but could not hold on. So they credit Rose with the double. Here's Joe Morgan at bat. Little Joe, who was with the Houston Astros for a number of years, now coming up here in a new role with the Cincinnati Ball Club. Morgan, left-hand hitter with good power. He hit 256 last year with the Astros and led them in home runs. A ground ball to first, Buckner near the bag up with it, takes the boy, a ball to the bag for the out there, but Morgan does his job and gets the runner to third base. A little Joe pulls and gets Rose into third, and here's Bobby Tolan. A big ovation for Tolan, who, of course, last year was out of the lineup with the Achilles tendon. And Bobby missed the entire season. But he is now in action and reported to be in good physical condition. So Tolan, who could really give the Reds a big lift, is back in action. He was on the disabled list for the entire 1971 uh, season. Now Sutton into the windup. The infield lays back. The pitch on the way is a breaking ball for a strike. It is 0-1. Tolan has been with the Reds for, this is his fourth year, although he missed, of course, last year. He came to them in 1969, hit 305. In 1970, he hit 316. Prior to that, he was with the Cardinals. Bobby is from Los Angeles. He and Willie Crawford went to high school together. Now the wind-up and the pitch on the way. Kerr bounced back toward the mound, sucking up with it. Bare hands, knocks down, goes to the plate, and Rose is coming back, barrels into Sims, who upends him, and he's out. Rose came in standing up, so Sims just turned a hard shoulder at Pete and blocked him off home plate, and Rose is out coming to the plate. Sutton knocked the ball down, picked it up, and still had a time for the play, and calmly threw it home. And Sims, of course, remembering what happened to a former Cleveland catcher, Ray Fossey, right here in an All-Star game, and Pete Rose knocked him out in scoring a run. Had that in the back of his mind as Rose came in hard, standing up, and Sims did not budge, did not flinch, and took Rose's best shot, and Rose is out at the plate, pitcher to catcher. So the Dodgers choke off the scoring threat. At first, it's Tolan on the fielder's choice. There's a ball in the dirt to bench, bounced away from Sims, and down to second base goes Tolan. So a wild pitch by Sutton advances Tolan to second base, bench waiting. Johnny had a disappointing year last year. He hit 238, 27 home runs, a good total, but 61 R uh, home, uh, RBIs to go with the 27 homers. So bench now trying to get the game even. The Dodgers picked up a run in the first inning on a double by Davis and a single by Robinson. Out on deck is Tony Perez. Both teams are in new uniforms. 
Both are sporting the new style double knit uniforms. Here's the look and the pitch. Curve low to bench and it is ball two. The design of the uniforms is different. The Dodgers have gone to double knits but have used the, the traditional design of buttons down the front. The Reds have gone to the pullovers with no buttons and no belts. Those are similar to the ones worn by Pittsburgh and the Cardinals. The Dodgers an entirely new style for double nets. It's a curve for a strike and it is two and one to bench. Actually, the Dodger uniforms will look quite similar to the ones they've used before. You'll notice the home uniforms when you see them though will have a much brighter white glow to them. The gray uniforms look about the same, but the difference of course is the double net and the big difference is that the Dodgers have now added their names on the back just above the numbers. A popular trend among most teams. Bench it's a ground ball to the right. Lefevre scoops it up. Throws the first in time. Good play to retire the side. So the Reds are gone in the first. No runs of the hit and a man left in the score at the end of one inning of play. Dodgers one, Reds nothing. If you're a knowledgeable baseball fan, you sure know the players in the National League and the American League well. But do you know them well enough to predict how they'll perform in their first stands and for the season? If you do, you could win up to $1,000 when you zero in on the Dodgers. You see, that's the first prize in Union 76 Dodger Dollars. It's easy to play. Just drive to any participating Union 76 station and pick up a free entry card. No purchase is necessary. The card has all the details about how to play. If you can predict which game the Dodgers will win in the next home stand, you could win the $1,000 first prize or one of the $3,100 second prizes. The 103rd prize winners will each get four free tickets to a Dodger game. But even if you don't win the first part of the contest, your card will still go into the sweepstakes where you could win a free trip to the All-Star game. Why don't you drive over to a participating Union 76 station, play Dodger Dollars. Sounds like a spirited deal. Licensed drivers only. The spirit of 76 lives at Union Oil. Well, friends, now for the restarting of the schedule, a new opener for the Dodgers. It will be next Friday night. The Dodgers against the San Diego Padres. Dodger home opener and the home debut of Frank Robinson. Honors before the game for Willie Davis and Wes Parker. Golden Glove winners at their positions. Comeback of the year award for Al Downing. Tickets for next Friday's opener are on sale now at Ticketron and Mutual Offices and at the Dodger Ticket Office on Stadium Way. Monday through Saturday, 9.30 to 5.30, or if you wish, by mail to the Dodgers, Box 100, Los Angeles, 90051. San Diego Padres in town for opening night, which is also a team night. Ladies' night Saturday and Walter Alston Day Sunday. Then the Expos, Mets, and Phillies coming to town during the homestand. Here's Willie Crawford at bat now. Willie is making his third start in an opening day game for the Dodgers. Billingham's wind-up and pitch. Fastball is in under the chin, and it is ball one. Willie Crawford hit 281 for the Dodgers last year. In the spring, he hit 305, so he had a good spring training. He won the job in left field, at least for the time being. Ground ball to first base, scooped up by Perez. Takes it to the bag, and there's one down. So Willie Crawford out. Ground ball to first. The batter will be Duke Sims. Billingham, of course, a sinker ball pitcher, and he keeps the ball on the ground a lot. This is the 88th opening day for the Cincinnati Reds. Of course, they were the inaugural team in baseball. They have opened at home amid all the festivities on all but three occasions since the mid-1880s. In our pregame ceremony, Senator Robert Taft, Jr. of Ohio, threw out the first ball. We had great band entertainment and a fine opening ceremony. The pitch to Sims. Curve is high, ball one. White umpires Tommy Gorman, Williams at first, McSherry at second, and newcomer Frank Pulley is around at third. One and all the count, Sims waiting. Billingham ready again, the pitch to Duke, strike called, and it's one and one. Duke had to leave the Dodgers in spring training a little bit early because of a touch of emphysema. At least he had trouble breathing. Had to come back into California, so he has really been out of action for quite a while. But he draws the nod in the opening lineup today. Fastball is high, and it's ball two, two and one. A great day in Cincinnati. But a great day. And I know that we, like you, are happy to see the ball players back in action. Away from the mediation boards and out on the baseball field. Here's the 2-1 pitch on the way. Ground ball to the right side. Perez up with this one. He'll run to the bag himself. And it's two outs. So Sims grounds out. Billy Grabarkowitz will be the batter. Billy G coming up. Playing at third base. Friends, get your free 1972 Dodger schedule from your favorite Union Oil 76 station while they last. A good handy pocket schedule so you can keep up with the Dodger doings. Grabarkowitz, who missed most of last year, had an operation on his shoulder in the wintertime, and he is completely confident now that he is cured. 
He could really help the ball club. He and Garvey have waged quite a duel at third base. Billy takes a curve strike, 0 and 1. Garvey has shown great improvement, so it's a tough decision for the Dodger skipper to start Grabarkowitz today over Garvey at third. Off speed pitch hit the shortstop. Concepcion on the hole. Long throw is in time. Side out, 1 2 3. So the score at the end of an inning and a half, the Dodgers won and the Reds nothing. Talking to Farmer John at the ballpark recently, he said he might change his famous slogan, the eastern most in quality and the western most in flavor. Naturally, he'd never do this, but he pointed out that if you were to change western most in flavor to western most in freshness, it would still be mighty meaningful, particularly as it pertains to his sausage. You see, much of the sausage sold here is made in the east. Then it's shipped as far as a thousand miles and more, frozen or in cold storage, to reach your store. But Farmer John's sausage is made in the West, from eastern corn-fed pork brought out here live and dressed fresh in the West. So, as Farmer John says, his sausage is the western most in freshness, unlike eastern-made sausage. And, of course, the fresher the sausage, the better its flavor. Farmer John's sausage, in skinless links and sausage roll, mild or hot, gold medal winner at the California State Fair. It's the eastern most in quality, the western most in flavor, and as western most in freshness as you can get. Don Sutton warming up now with Duke Sims. The Reds will start it off with Perez, Menke, and Geronimo. Here on an overcast day, a threatening day in Cincinnati. Don Sutton drawing the opening assignment. Don would have been the opening pitcher had the season opened on time in Los Angeles last week. So he just held over and will open up today. He had a good spring. Now he's all set to pitch to Tony Perez. Tony's back home at first base now after the winter trade for the Reds that sent away Lee May. Tony had moved over to play third while May was with the ball club. And now he goes back to his original position at first. Sutton's pitch to him. Fastball looped along the right field line, going foul. Buckner chases out of play. So it is strike one to Tony Perez. Tony had a disappointing start of the year last season. He wound up pretty well, though, with a 269 average, 25 home runs, and 91 RBIs. But he had a bad hand during the first month or two of the year and could not get on track. So it took him a while to get going, and he, along with the absence of Tolan and the slow start of bench, was one of the big reasons why the big red machine faltered and sputtered at the start last year. And they've made the trades during the winter time to patch up the defense and give the ball club a little more speed. Fastball is low. Check it. Hit the inside corner for a strike. 0-2. Oh, Boy, that was a dandy pitch by Sutton. Inside around the knees. No way that Perez could have handled that one. No balls. Two strikes. Now Sutton again looking to Sims for a sign. Rubs one off. Gets a new one. Here's the wind-up band. The pitch on the way. Breaking ball is swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Perez on strikes. That's the first strikeout for Don Sutton. Brings to bat Dennis Menke. The shortened season, of course, might be a subject of considerable discussion and controversy down toward the end of the year. But as it stands right now, the Dodgers will play 155 games instead of the normal 162. The Reds will play 154. The teams that will play the fewest will be Houston with 153 games in the National League West Division. There's a fly ball, a foul along the right field line. San Diego also will play 153. They've missed nine. The Reds, Atlanta, missed eight. The Dodgers and the Giants each missed seven. They will play the longest seasons. Fastball is outside for a ball. The count one and one now to Dennis Menke, another newcomer to the ball club. Dennis was with Houston for a while. Prior to that, he was with the Atlanta Braves, Milwaukee Braves originally. A swing and a miss, and Sutton has a good live fastball today. That is strike two and ball one to Dennis Menke. Dennis last year at Houston hit 246 and had only one home run, which is really a come down for him because he normally has a few more than that. Now the pitch. Foul back out of play. In this ball game today here at Cincinnati, three, four players from Houston are in the starting lineup. All four who were involved in the trade. Menke, Geronimo, Billingham, and Morgan. One out, Don Sutton working to Dennis Menke. The wind-up and the pitch on the way. Fastball inside, ball two, and it's a 2-2 count. 
It's 3.30 down the lines here. 3.75 to the power alleys in left and right. And 4.04 to straightaway center. They have removed the imaginary line that would uh, denote the outer limits of the infield so-called area here on the AstroTurf. They've done away with that. They have the inner line still in there. A fly ball to left field deep. Way back in the corner. Going for it. Crawford going, going. Home run. Menke, who hit only one home run last year, and in essence was the player traded for Lee May, who hit 39 home runs last year, gets off to a very fine start in a Cincinnati uniform. He hits a home run his first time at bat, and the ball game is even, all even at 1-1 on a 2-2 count. He hit it just inside the foul pole down to the left field corner. Here is Cesar Geronimo now, left-hand hitter, playing in right field. Pitch on the way, swung on and missed strike one. So a home run for Dennis Menke. One strike to count. Pitch on the way to the left-hand batter. Curve low for a ball. Geronimo hit 220 for Houston last year. Ball game is even as the Reds strike with a home run for Dennis Menke. He had won last year, 13 the year before. Fastball is in tight. Ball two, and it's a two and one count. Geronimo is a fine fielder. The question is, will he hit? The Reds hope so. He has a lifetime average of 228 in 169 games. So he's just a baby. He hasn't got too much experience yet. Bouncing ball back past second. Up with it, Lefevre throws the first in time, and we have two outs. Geronimo taps out to Lefevre. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. This is KTAR Phoenix. Don't ever let a happy moment pass you by all through the day. Here's shortstop Dave Concepcion coming on. Concepcion. Right hand batter takes a curve in there for a strike. 0 and 1. Owen won the count. Some other games are underway. Philadelphia at Chicago. No score through three. Make it in the bottom of the third. Carlton and Jenkins in that one. There's a bouncer back to Sutton. Don has it. Turns. Throws into first in time and the side retired. One run on a home run by Menke. None left. The score at the end of two. Dodgers won. The Reds have won. We don't expect you to remember everything we tell you about the Toyota Corolla 1200 sedan. We don't expect you to remember the manufacturer's suggested retail price, which is $1,956, plus freight local taxes, dealer prep, and options. We don't expect you to remember all the things that are included in the price as standard equipment. Things like front disc brakes, white walls, tinted glass, and a fresh air heater. Things like a four-speed transmission, reclining bucket seats, and nylon carpeting. We don't expect you to remember everything that's included for the $1,956. Just remember our standard equipment list is long, our price is low, and our name is Toyota. And that's enough to remember. See your nearby Toyota dealer. Get your hands on a Toyota you'll never let go. Jack Billingham warming up. The Dodgers started off with Sutton, Wills, and Buckner. As we go to play in the top of the third on a gray day in Cincinnati. Though temperature-wise, it's very pleasant. Temperature should be in the high 70s. Little humidity. Here's Sutton coming up now. Down a pretty good hitter will face Billingham. Billingham, of course, started in the Dodger organization as a relief pitcher. He came to the big leagues as a relief pitcher. And then has done a turnabout and has become a starting pitcher and a good one. The normal trend, of course, is for a fellow to start out as a starter and then develop into a relief pitcher. But Billingham has done it the other way. First pitch is outside ball one, one ball and no strikes. Tomorrow, same two clubs, downing against Nolan from Cincinnati. Breaking ball low, ball two, and it is a 2 at 0 count. It was the opinion of most people, and Walter Olson included, that the strike would affect the hitters more so than the pitchers. 
the pitchers could, of course, keep throwing and keep their arms in shape, keep running, keep the legs in shape, is a bouncing ball toward Morgan. Little Joe has it, throws him out, and it's one away. The hitters, though, did not get a chance to swing it pitching in game action or under game conditions only in batting practice, which, of course, might keep their timing up a little bit, but they would not be as sharp as the pitchers would be, and so most people feel that the first few games of the spring of the season now will be maybe low-scoring games. We'll kind of see how that trend develops here for the f first few days. Here's Wells at bat. He grounded a short first time up. Maury hit 281 last year. Jack Billingham set to go to work to Mousy. Fastball low, one ball, no strikes. The Dodgers and the Reds last year in 18 games. The Dodgers were good at home, but not too good here. They won four and lost five in Cincinnati, but they won seven of nine in Los Angeles. There's a fly ball on the left side. Going out for it is uh, Concepcion. Rose comes in, calls, and makes the catch. So Will's on a fly ball to Rose. Two down for the batter, Billy Buckner. Be sure to look and ask for the winners when you shop your market. Farmer John's Strictly Fresh Pork and Pork Products. Gold medal winners year after year at the California State Fair. Here's Buckner at bat now. Grounded the second his first time up. Billy Bucks, they call him. Young man making his third start. Open today lineup for the Dodgers. Ground ball to first. Perez has this one. Easy play into the bag. Side retired. Billingham now has retired seven in a row. Dodgers out in the third. The score at the end of two and a half. Reds one. Dodgers one. Well, it's the beginning of a new baseball season, and if you have the memory for it, just think back. It's rather fitting that today's opener is being played against the Cincinnati Reds, because it was back on April the 10th, 1962, that the Dodgers lost to the Reds in the first National League game ever played at Dodger Stadium. It's also rather ironic that Frank Robinson was in the Reds' starting lineup during that game in 1962. And now here it is ten years later, Frank is playing for the Dodgers in his first game against, of all people, the Cincinnati Reds. Well, I think you'll enjoy some exciting baseball today. And since this is the opening game, we'd also like to welcome a new sponsor to the season, Olympia Beer. Olympia is the light beer made from the naturally pure artesian brewing water of Tumwater, Washington. So welcome to the Dodger lineup, Olympia. And to you Dodger fans, make sure you have plenty of Ole on hand for every game this year. Because there's nothing like a nice, cold, good beer to go with a good game of baseball. Don Sutton warming up. And he'll pitch first to his pitching opponent, Jack Billingham. We're checking out the schedule of games missed by the clubs. The teams that had the most postponements because of the strike, Houston and San Diego, nine. Cincinnati and Atlanta, eight. The Dodgers, the Giants, the Pirates, and the Cubs had seven missed. And all of the others missed six. New York, Philadelphia, St. Louis, and Montreal. That'll be an unbalanced schedule this year. We'll see how it works out. Here's Billingham now, waiting as Sutton gets set to go. The windup and the pitch on the way. Fastball is over for a strike. On one to Jack Billingham. Jack is just a so-so hitter. Big tall Jack up there waiting. Don Sutton checking signs. First game of the season, opening day at Cincinnati. Fly ball to right field, goes foul down in the corner, way down there, out of play. Strike two to Jack Billingham. The Dodgers, of course, making the last-minute trade a deal, rather, to claim Dick Dietz on the waivers, have optioned young catcher Steve Yeager to Albuquerque, and, of course, Steve was very disappointed. He'd made the club and then the, the set out after the Dodgers able to pick up a veteran receiver, Dick Dietz. A swing and a miss for Billingham, and down he goes, one away. Here's Pete Rose coming up now. That's the second strikeout for Don Sutton. Rose doubled in the first inning. So Pete coming up now. The Dodgers now have a catching car of Sims, Canazero, and Dietz. And they are certainly well fortified in that position now. Fastball is in high. Ball one. They might be classified in this way. Sims, good receiver, good left-hand hitter. Canazero, excellent receiver, right-hand batter. Well, not too high on average, but a very smart receiver. Dietz, a very good hitter and an adequate receiver, although not in the class of uh, Canazero behind the plate. The manager, Walter, also have a lot of fun juggling his receivers throughout the season. The 2-0 pitch. 
Fastball fouled away, and it's 2-1 to Pete Rose. Tomorrow's game, we'll see 20-game winner Al Downing against Gary Nolan of the Reds here in the second game of the season. The Dodgers then will go on to Atlanta for a four-game series there. And then we'll be back home for Friday night's opener against the San Diego Padres, who are opening at home this evening. They're playing the Atlanta Braves. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Rose. But at third base wave, the Barco is passed, off balance throw, safe. No doubt Pete Rose had heard about the operation that Billy Grabarkowitz had this winter, and he wasted no time in testing Billy. He laid down a perfect bunt. Grabarkowitz made a good play on the ball, but it was just not in time. Had the ball been a little sharper, he would have had him. But it was a perfect bunt by Rose for the uh, second hit for Pete in the game. And he tested Grabarkowitz early, but Billy made a good throw. So the arm was okay. It was just a perfect bunt by Rose. Here now is Joe Morgan at bat, grounded to Buckner first time up. The pitch on the way, high ball one. We'll see now if the Reds go for a play here with the left-hand batter Rose open up there. Hole open on the right side, and Pete Rose at first, Morgan at bat. Sutton working, and Grabarkowitz lays in now at third base up in front of the bag. We're playing on AstroTurf here in Cincinnati. Curve is low, ball two. There's only a limited amount of dirt here on the field. That, of course, would be the cutout areas on the bases, the circular cutouts for the mound and the home plate area. The rest of the playing field is complete Astro turf. Two balls, no strikes. Rose leads away from Buckner. There's a pop-up on the right side. It'll go foul and out of play behind the Reds' dugout. So a baseball souvenir scattered into the stands behind the Reds' dugout on the first base side. And it is a two-ball, one-strike count to the batter, Joe Morgan. We're in the third inning last half. Little Joe up waiting. Rose on it first. Sutton with a look and a throw, not in time. We do not have a capacity crowd. They had sold out a capacity crowd for the opening day a week ago last Wednesday. But they have quite a few no-shows today, mainly because of the weather. But what the official account will be, we're not sure. It might be 50,000. The crowd in the house would probably be a little under 50,000. But normally and traditionally, the Reds sell out their opener. Fastball is outside for ball. Three and one now to Morgan. So Sutton is a little behind in the count. Both managers, by the way, say that they would play it, ignoring the strike and the long layoff, and they would not schedule a pitcher for three or four or five innings as they do early in spring training, that the pitcher's out there to go as he would... In any normal situation. 3-1 pitch. Drive to right field down in the corner. Hooking. Foul. So Joe Morgan trying to shake up the crowd and create some new fans for himself. As did Dennis Menke. A lot of the fans here were a little bitter about the trade that set away popular Lee May. In fact, there were bumper stickers set out this winter that said trade Housem. He's the general manager of the club. Trade Housem for anyone you can get. But now Dennis Menke has already made the trade look good. Morgan and Billingham are trying to also chip in. But it's a long season. We'll see how it comes out. 3-2 count. Rose expected to run now with one out. So Sutton makes a throw over there to keep him tied up tight. Sutton checks. The look in the pitch. Runner going. Fly ball to right field. Near the line. In the corner. Robinson coming after it. The ball goes foul down in the stands. So a three and two count now to Joe Morgan. Rose comes back to first base. The score is tied 1-1. The Dodgers are running the first inning, a double by Davis, a single by Robinson. The Reds tied it on a home run by Dennis Menke in the second. We're glad to have in our listening audience once again the first lady of the Dodgers, Mrs. Kay O'Malley, back home after her surgery at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, came back to Los Angeles today. Pitch on the way, fly ball to left, well hit. Backboard goes Crawford, he's there, makes the catch. Rose at second, turns, goes back now as Morgan is out on a drive to left field. Two away, the batter will be Bobby Tolan. Bobby, tap one back to the box, his first time up. So Tolan at bat, left-hander, fine outfielder, good hitter. Tolan.
Conan waits. There's a swing and a miss at a good fastball. Strike one. Ball game tied. 1-1. One, one. The Dodgers have a run and two hits. The Reds have a run and three hits. Rose is on with a bunt single here in the third inning. Sparky Anderson has said this might be the best club he's had since he's been at Cincinnati. This is his third year, of course. Here's a pitch on the way. Off speed is over for a strike. 0-2 to Tolan. That ball on a good spot inside around the belt. Now again, Don Sutton checking signs. The look and a throw over to first base. Rose gets back. We have a high sky now. We had low clouds before, but we now have a pretty high sky, although it's overcast, very gray. The lights are on. They've been on since the start. Cullen swings and misses strike three. Down he goes. Third strikeout for Sutton. The side is retired. So we've gone through three innings of play here at Cincinnati. Vin Scully will be along with more play in the fourth. The score at the end of three, Dodgers won and the Reds have won. Good morning, Mrs. Higgins. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, just fine, thank you, Mr. Brady. And how are the children? Oh, they are really great. I bet they like the weather. They oh. say in the good old days, a shopkeeper really knew his customers. He was a friend and neighbor, not just someone you did business with. So he gave you the kind of service you could count on. Well, we can't promise you that whenever you drive into a Union 76 station, you'll be greeted by name. But our dealers do try to keep alive the spirit of friendly, personal service. They try to have a friendly welcome for everyone. Whether you're coming in for gasoline, repairs, or just directions. They'll do their best to solve your problem and get you going again, courteously and efficiently. No one can bring back the good old days. But there are some people who think that friendliness isn't old-fashioned. They're the people with spirit. And you'll find them wherever you see the big orange ball. The spirit of 76 lives at Union Oil. Thank you, Jerry. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good day to you, wherever you may be. We're in the fourth inning at Riverfront Stadium here in Cincinnati. And despite leaden skies, a fine crowd, and a good ball game, a 1-1 tie into the fourth inning. The Dodgers have only two hits, but they put them together. A double by Willie Davis and a single up the middle by Frank Robinson to get him home. And the Reds run a home run to left field by newly acquired Dennis Menke. So we go to the fourth inning. It'll be the second time around now for Willie Davis, Frank Robinson, and Jim Lefevre. And Jack Billingham, big right-hander, 6'4", 195-pounder, ready to go to work. Billingham to the wind-up and works high to Willie, ball one. Davis hit one over Rose's head, and it short-hopped the wall in left field for his double. Menke plays up on the rug at third, and Davis drives it into right field, coming up in a hurry and making a diving catch is Cesar Geronimo. <laughs> Young Cesar Geronimo, newly acquired from Houston in the big deal that the Reds made, could not have made that play except the sinking drive was on his glove side. Geronimo is a left-handed thrower, and the ball was hit to his right side. A fine play, and now here's Frank Robinson. Holds up on a breaking ball, down and away, ball one, one and oh. One ball and no strikes to Frank Robinson. Billingham back to the plate, fastball, and a high drive to straightaway center and pretty deep. Guard Geronimo, newly acquired from Houston in the big deal that the Reds made, could not have made that play, except the sinking drive was on his glove side. Geronimo is a left-handed thrower, and the ball was hit to his right side. A fine play, and now here's Frank Robinson. Holds up on a breaking ball, down and away, ball one, one and oh. One ball and no strikes to Frank Robinson. Billingham back to the plate, fastball, and a high drive to straightaway center and pretty deep. Back goes Tolan, away back to the wall. He's got it at the wall. So Frank Robinson sent Tolan 400 feet for his long drive to center. Two down, and the batter, Jimmy Lefevre. Lefevre flied to center in the first inning. 
Dillingham primarily is a sinker ball pitcher, and he would keep his infield busy. That's been the story through the first three innings. Now here in the fourth, two pretty well hit balls, but they've been handled by Geronimo and Tolan. Lefever hitting left-handed, 0 for 1. Billingham deals a curve down at Jimmy's left foot, ball one. A 1-1 one, one tie, fourth inning, two out. Good ball game. Don Sutton and Jack Billingham. Tomorrow, it'll be Al Downing and Gary Nolan. Billingham comes back with a breaking ball that stays away. Ball two, 2-0. Two oh. Riverfront Stadium, 330 down the line. 375 to the power alleys, 404 to center. Two balls and no strikes to Jimmy Lefevre. Off speed and it's in for a strike and the count two and one. Dodgers won 11 of 18 from the Reds last year. Now the 2-1 pitch, fastball and Lefevre very late on it. The Dodgers will play the Reds 15 times this year, losing the three at Dodger Stadium. Breaking ball is pulled to Tony Perez, and he'll go to the bag with it, and the Dodgers are done in the fourth. One, two, three, and the score at the end of three and a half innings. Dodgers one, Reds one. Maybe you've seen Farmer John at the ballpark, and I'm sure you've seen his likeness on many foods in your store, but never on a canned product, because Farmer John is a great believer in freshness. Now, you take the case of his fully cooked and boneless hams. They're freshly cured here in the West, so no canned ham can touch them for freshness and fresh flavor. And to begin with, Farmer John makes his hams from only strictly fresh eastern corn-fed pork. He brings the porkers out here live, and the meat's dressed fresh in the West. Most packers ship their pork in frozen or in cold storage. And then there's the smoking. Farmer John smokes his ham a secret old-time western way over native western wood to give it a wonderful western flavor you won't find in canned ham. And when you buy a Farmer John fully cooked and boneless ham, there's no can to open, no gelatin to scrape off, and no cooking. Just heat it in the oven or serve it cold. Look for Farmer John fully cooked and boneless ham, cello wrapped and labeled in the meat department of your market. Moving to the bottom of the fourth inning, a 1-1 tie. The Dodgers and the Reds. Opening day, 1972, and thank goodness it's here. There were some folks who wondered about crowd reaction to the players. And one thing was definitely apparent. Despite the weather, despite the dismal forecast, the enthusiasm was certainly not dimmed by any means. The crowd is here, and they're up for it, and it's a good ball game. Johnny Bench, Tony Perez, and Dennis Menke in that order. And Sutton starts with a fastball, jammed him, a little dribble at a Buckner. He feeds Sutton coming across in time. So Bench jammed on a fastball, grounds out. One away. The batter is Tony Perez. He chased a curveball in the dirt for strike three, his first trip. Tony Strong, right-hand hitting first baseman, played third, of course. But because of the deal, Lee May went. Dennis Menke came here, so Menke's at third, and Tony moves over. Sutton ready, fastball, foul back, and the count on one. A 1-1 one, one tie. Bottom of the fourth. From here on in, I would think, from the fourth inning on, the stamina of the pitchers will be questioned. Both managers very aware that the fellows are not 100% fastball inside. So it's a question now, really, of just which man is going to be a little stronger. One ball and one strike. Sutton back with a good breaking ball. Dipped in nicely for a strike. One and two. It looked like it was going to be a shoulder-high fastball, and it suddenly darted down and got into the zone. One and two to Tony Perez. Sutton reading Duke Sims. Don into the windup and the one-two fastball is grounded to third. Grabarkowitz up with it. Shot puts the ball across to Buckner in time. Dennis Menke coming up, getting a round of applause. That's a great way to break in after a trade. Your first appearance at home with your new ball club, you hit a home run to tie things up. 
A reminder, don't forget Walter Austin Day, Sunday, April the 23rd. Toyota remembering Walt II with a beautiful Toyota Mark II. The date once again, Sunday, April 23rd. Honors for Walt Austin. Dodgers playing San Diego. Sutton ready and works his hitter and it's fouled off. Menke trying to wind up on a curveball. 0-1. The Reds one run, three hits. One a bloop double by Rose and a bunt single by Rose. And then the home run by Menke. The Dodgers one run, two hits. A double by Davis and a single by Robinson. Sutton right back with a Scroogey that missed low. One ball, one strike. One and one. Don's fastball is a one-hopper hit to Wills. Maury flags it and goes to Buckner, and the inning is over. So the Reds are out in order, one, two, three, and the score at the end is four. The Dodgers won, the Reds won. The difference between what you pay for our economy car and what you pay for some other economy cars isn't just the price, it's what you get for the price. Even on the lowest priced Toyota, you get at no extra cost front disc brakes, white wall tires, wheel covers, and tinted glass. You get reclining bucket seats, nylon carpeting, a glove box, a flow-through ventilation system, and about 20 other extras. Now, figure you get all that on the Toyota Corolla 1200 sedan for just $1,956. That's the manufacturer's suggested retail price, not including freight, local taxes, dealer prep, and options. And you'll begin to see the real difference between our price at $1,956 and their price, whatever it is. See your nearby Toyota dealer. Get your hands on a Toyota you'll never let go. We've got four innings in the books here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. A 1-1 tie. The Dodgers are run on two hits. The Reds are run on three hits. Fine game between Don Sutton and Jack Billingham. Willie Crawford, Duke Sims, and Bill Grabarkowitz in that order. Crawford grounded out to Tony Perez his first trip. He takes a strike that bends him back. 0-1 oh, the count. Billingham doesn't fool around on the mound, comes right back away, and they count one ball and one strike. Scores of other ball games, we might duck them in for you. Pittsburgh at New York with Ellis and Seaver. Willie hits the ball right through Billingham's legs and on out into center field. So Willie Crawford singles to center to open up matters in the fifth inning. For the Dodgers, their third hit, and the totals are now identical. Philadelphia, Chicago, they're even 1-1 one, one in the bottom of the fifth inning. Steve Carlton and Ferguson Jenkins. Home run by Lozinski in the fourth inning. Got Philadelphia a run. Montreal at St. Louis. Montreal leading Bob Gibson 2 to nothing at the end of two and a half innings on a home run by Mike Jorgensen, who formerly was with the New York Mets. Stoneman against Gibson. Two night game openers, San Francisco at Houston, Marischal and Wilson. Atlanta at San Diego, Necro and Kirby. Duke Sims looks at a breaking ball low. I'll give you the American League schedule. New York at Baltimore, Stottlemyre and Palmer. Milwaukee and Cleveland 1-1 at the end of four. Parsons and Gaylord Perry. Boston, Detroit 2-2 two, two at the end of two and a half innings. Patton and Lolich. Brinkman a home run. Chicago, Kansas City scoreless at the end of three. Wood and Drago. An off-speed curve is over for a strike. In the count, one and one. Minnesota at Oakland. Bly, Levin, and Holtzman. And tonight, Texas and California. Bosman and Messersmith, the probable pitchers. So you're right up to date. One ball and one strike. The count to Duke Sims. Billingham ready and deals a fastball. That's it down to Morgan, who boots it and can't pick it up. And everybody's saved. Morgan was trying to short hop the ball and shovel it to Concepcion to start a double play, but he came up empty. He'll draw an error, and the Dodgers have two on with nobody out. The 
The batter now will be Bill Grabarkowitz. Grabarkowitz already had a chat with Walter Alston. Grabarkowitz followed by pitcher Sutton and then Maury Wills. So a single up the middle and an error. And we have two on, nobody out, and a meeting at the mound. Johnny Bench, Joe Morgan, and Jack Billingham. Grabarkowitz grounded a Concepcion in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. Bill checks in at the plate. Billingham out of a stretch. They pull up the corners looking for a bunt. Jack delivers and Billy takes a curve in the dirt. Ball one. Menke and Perez are up. The outfield about straight away. A 1-1 tie on this opening day. The 88th opening day for the Cincinnati Reds. The 1-0 pitch Knocks him down. It wasn't much on it, however. It was an off-speed pitch, and the break was not big enough. Two balls and no strikes to count to Bill Grabarkowitz. Billingham takes a breather for the moment. Now Jack turns to check in with Johnny Bench again. Olympia Beer joining the Dodger lineup. You pop yourself a nice cold Ole right now. Breaking ball for a strike. Rebarco had started an offer and held up. A 1-1 tie. The totals, one run, three hits for the Dodgers. One run, three hits, and an error for the Reds. Billingham at the belt. Checks the runners. 2-1 fastball is fouled back to the screen. And the count, 2-2. Two and two. Dodgers won 11 of 18 from the Reds last year. They won four of the nine here. They had a decided edge, winning seven out of nine at Dodger Stadium. However, this year, they will be playing only six times at home against Cincinnati. Two and two to Grabarkowitz. Billingham's breaking ball is hit slowly to Menke. Dennis waits, then goes to Morgan for one. The throw to first, not in time. And going hard into second base was Duke Sims to take out Little Joe. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. KTAR Phoenix. Run is at first and third, one away. And Don Sutton coming up. Sutton is a pretty fair hitting pitcher. In fact... It was a little surprising, but a tribute that he was allowed to swing 2-0 in the third inning. With a count two balls and no strikes, leading off, he had the green light and rolled out. So one out, runners at first and third. They pull up the corners again. Perez holding Grabarkowitz. Menke about even with the bag. The outfield pretty shallow. And Sutton trying to poke the ball somewhere and get Willie Crawford home. Billingham out of a stretch. A look at his runners, works the plate, and it's on the inside corner with a breaking ball. Strike one. A 1-1 tie. We're in the fifth inning. The Dodgers have just gotten a break. An error by Joe Morgan. Billingham comes right back, and a breaking ball is lunged at and missed, and the bat goes out to shortstop. So Sutton badly fooled on that pitch and lost the bat. 0-2 oh, to Don. Sutton back up to the plate and bench in a crouch. Willie Crawford down the line from third. Bill Grabarkowitz held on by Perez at first. A 1-1 tie in the fifth inning. Opening day. Billingham at 6-4, straightens up, and the strike two pitch on the way is foul back. Again, Sutton losing his bat. He has to go out to the mound to get it. The count remains, no balls and two strikes. 
tomorrow, it'll be Al Downing and Gary Nolan. Oh, and two, the count to Don. Billingham straightens up. Another check of the runners. The right hand to Reddy, and the strike two pitch to Sutton is a fastball just outside. He started his swing and held up, and the crowd thought it was a strike. One and two. Tommy Gorman held out his right hand, almost a waving gesture to indicate the pitch was off the corner. Billingham again ready, looks at his runners, comes to Sutton, a curveball, a little foul, a first Perez to the dugout, one hands it. So Tony Perez makes a fine defensive play to one hand, that little looping foul, almost falling into the Cincinnati dugout, but a little protective railing gave him some support. So Billingham, despite a base hit on an error, got Grabarkowitz on a force play, gets Sutton to foul out, and now Maury Wills. Wills has grounded out and flied to left. Tom Hall, a young left-hander who in the modern-day language can really bring it. Well, Hall from Minnesota, loosening up in the Cincinnati bullpen. Tom Hall. Sparky Anderson said before the ball game that from the fourth inning on, he was going to talk constantly to Billingham and all the while have Hall ready, and he is certainly staying to that bit of strategy. Fifth inning, a 1-1 tie, runners at first and third, and Wills trying to pick somebody up. The fastball is away. Ball one. One and all the count. Dodgers got a run in the first inning. The Reds got it back in the second, and now we're in the fifth. Billingham up on top at the belt. Another check of the runners. The 1 0 fastball is lifted to Pete Rose in left field. So Billingham gets out of the jam as Pete puts it away. No runs, one hit, an error, two men left. And at the end of four and a half innings, the Dodgers won, the Reds won. Well, friends, right now it's time once again for the Olympia Cavalcade of Trivia. Now, I'll bet you've been wondering about the earliest baseball game ever played. You'll be happy to know it was on June the 19th, 1846, in Hoboken, New Jersey, where the New York Nine defeated the Knickerbockers 23-1 to in an action-packed four innings of play. Now you're probably going to say that was amateur ball. What was the first all-pro team? Well, the earliest all-professional team was the Cincinnati Red Stockings in 1869, exactly 27 years before Olympia built their brewery in Tumwater, Washington, where they've been making Olympia beer for over 75 years with naturally pure artesian brewing water, choice malting barley, personally selected hops, and natural carbonation. Relaxing with an Olympia beer would probably be a good idea right now. It's one of the best ways we know to fully appreciate this segment of the Olympia Cavalcade of Trivia. Bottom of the fifth inning at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. A 1-1 tie. The Dodgers will go from Cincinnati to Atlanta and then home. And remember, the homestand will begin Friday night with the San Diego Padres. And Sunday, the 23rd, will be Walter Alston Day. And we sure hope you make your plans to be with us during our first homestand. San Diego, Montreal, and the New York Mets, they'll all be in, and it'll close out with the Phillies on the 3rd of May. Don Sutton working to Cesar Geronimo. Left hand hitting right fielder, hits one up the chute high above the infield, and Will, staring up into that leaden sky, makes the catch for the out. One away. So Geronimo, who has made the defensive play of the game, a diving one-hand catch of a drive by Willie Davis, makes the first out in the fifth inning, and the batter is shortstop Davey Concepcion. Concepcion hit back to the box in the second inning. Sutton checking with Duke Sims. Concepcion, skinny right-hand batter, looks at a fastball. It's in there for a strike on one. The pitchers have good control. They appear to have good stuff. And the only question mark would be stamina from here on in. Fastball inside. One ball and one strike to count. A run, three hits for each side. 
Down to the windup, and Sutton's 1-1 fastball is over for a strike. One and two. So he's given Concepcion nothing but the hard stuff. One ball, two strikes. Jack Billingham is on deck. Don checking with Duke Sims. We'll see if he goes to the breaking ball now. He did, and it's a ground ball to the hole. Wills plugs it up, sets himself, and throws out Concepcion. Two down, and Billingham will be the batter. Say, be sure to team up often with the most delicious lineup in your market. Farmer John, bacon, ham, sausage, wieners, luncheon meats, and fresh pork. There are none finer and none fresher. Jack Billingham struck out in the third inning. Fastball set him up and the curveball got him. Dodger run came in the first inning. A two-out double by Willie Davis. And Frank Robinson single got him home. In the second inning, Dennis Menke homered. Fastball over for a strike. 0-1. and one The count to Jack Billingham. Sutton into the windup. Don comes back with a breaking ball that missed inside. And the count one ball and one strike. Tomorrow's game from Cincinnati. Al Downing, Gary Nolan on KFI, the Dodger Radio Network. And on Channel 11, KTTV in Los Angeles. Fastball fouled away. All Sunday away games will be televised on Channel 11. As well, of course, as the games from San Francisco. The wars from San Francisco. One and two, the count to Jack Billingham. Sutton ready, here he comes. Breaking ball, got him swinging. Good curveball. So Sutton now has retired eight in a row. He picks up his fourth strikeout, and the score at the end of five. Dodgers one, Reds one. I'm sure you folks have heard a lot of people on radio and television and also in the newspapers making predictions about how many games the Dodgers would win on their next homestand. Well, that would be their individual opinions. But now, you can voice your opinion when you play Union 76 Dodger Dollars. And you can win up to $1,000 doing it. All you have to do is pick the winners in the next Dodger homestand. To enter Dodger Dollars, just drive into any participating Union 76 station in the greater Los Angeles area, get your official entry card. On it, you'll find all the information you'll need to play Dodger Dollars, and you can enter as often as you wish, so play often. There'll be 30 second prizes of $100, and the 103rd prize winners will receive four box seat tickets to a Dodger game. So enter now. There'll also be a drawing of all entries at the end of the contest for a free trip to the All-Star Game. No purchase required. Licensed drivers only. Voice your own opinion. Play Dodger Dollars. Your chance to show how much you know about baseball and pick up a little cash, too. The Spirit of 76 lives at Union Oil. We go to the sixth inning at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. A fine ball game, a 1-1 tie before a good crowd. Opening day, 1972. We sure hope you'll be with us for all the fuss and feathers and excitement at Dodger Stadium. Friday night, the 21st, the San Diego Padres. For the Dodgers in the sixth inning, Bill Buckner, Willie Davis, and then Frank Robinson. Jack Billingham was touched up for his only run in the first inning. So they're even at one apiece, and we go to the sixth. One opener went down the drain in Baltimore. The Yankees were rained out. The Mets are to open up with Pittsburgh... And we thought they were going to play a day game, but we have not heard a word out of New York. So we don't have a word on it. But here's Bill Buckner, grounded out twice. Billingham's fastball inside crowds him at the shins, ball one. Buckner in the starting role at first base. He has started for the Dodgers now three years in a row. The other two years in left field. Back comes Billingham, and a breaking ball is swung on and missed, and the count one and one. Jack Billingham and Johnny Bench, an infield of Tony Perez and Joe Morgan, Davey Concepcion and Dennis Menke, and an outfield of Rose, Tolan, and Geronimo. The one-one fastball knocks Buckner down right at the point of his chin. Two balls and one strike. Now, Buckner is flattened, gets out of the dirt, climbs back in. Wow. 
Buckner waiting, Billingham ready, and the fastball is poked to left field, and there's nobody there. It's slicing in the corner for extra bases, and Rose has to go to the wall to get it. Buckner opening up the inning with a stand-up double. So Bill Buckner slices a double into the left field corner to get the Dodgers off and running in the sixth inning. Dodgers had an opportunity in the fifth inning, but couldn't cash it in. They were at the bottom part of the lineup. Now Buckner opens up with a double, and you have Davis, Robinson, and Lefevre trying to get him home. Tom Hall was throwing earlier in the Cincinnati bullpen. Ed Sprague, a right-hander, now begins to throw. So Sprague heating up in a hurry as Billingham might start to get the wobbles here. And the wobbles would come, no doubt, after a tougher fifth inning. Here's Davis trying to pull, but he gets a pitch away, ball one. Willie, of course, one way or the other, trying to at least get Buckner over to third base. Now in the Cincinnati bullpen, left-hander Tom Hall joins Ed Sprague. Billingham... A look back at Buckner, bird dog by Concepcion, and Davis pops it up. So he leaves his man at second base, and he popped it up to the other side. Shortstop Concepcion makes the play. So Willie unable to move Buckner, and the batter is Frank Robinson. So that's a big out without a runner being able to advance. In this kind of a game, had Buckner gotten over to third, at this stage they probably would have had to pull the infield up. No, so that's a very big out. All right, Frank Robinson, single to center, and then sent Bobby Tolan all the way to the center field fence for his long shot in the fourth inning. Robbie, returning to Cincinnati, but in a dodgy uniform, looks at a slow curve low, ball one. Big sign draped over the balcony in right field that sums it up. Welcome back, Robbie. Robinson trying to pick up Buckner, 1-1 tie in the sixth inning. Billingham at the belt and delivers a breaking ball. It's pulled foul back of Ozark down the left field line, one and one. They be sure to see you nearby Toyota dealer. Start economizing with the low-priced Toyota 1600 two-door family station wagon. One and one, the count to Frank Robinson. One, one tie in the sixth, one out. Bill Buckner at second base, having just doubled. Billingham straightens up, checks Buckner, works Robbie, and that's pulled foul. Big curveball in on the hands, and Robbie rolled it into the Dodger dugout. One and two. Buckner walks off second base. Billingham reading Johnny Bench. He was in a scrape in the fifth inning and got out of it, and he's in a little jam here in the sixth. 1-2 pitch is a curve outside. So after giving him slow curveballs on the hands, he went away with him and missed. And the count, 2-2. Two and two. On deck, Jim Lefevre. Ed Sprague has a warm-up toss, get away, and he'll have to call time. And that warm-up toss almost hit Jim Gilliam. But he was really wild on that one. 2-2 two and two the count. One, one tie. Sixth inning, Frank Robinson trying to do something about it. The 2-2 two, two pitch is low, ball three. So a full count to Frank. Billingham straightens up, set at the belt. Long Jack delivers. Curveball got him swinging. Big, slow jug. And Robinson way out in front of it. So Jack Billingham picks up his first and only strikeout, and it came at a great time. He gets Robinson with a runner at second base. And with two down, it's up to Jim Lefevre. Jimmy is 0 for 2. So Buckner opened up the inning with a double, and he's still there. Fine bit of pitching by Jack Billingham. Jack, hands on his knees, reading bench, now straightens up. And the pitch of the fever is a line drive down the right field line. Base hit. That gets Buckner in. Jimmy on his way for two, and Geronimo's throw is not in time. 
Cesar Geronimo with one of the great arms in the league. But Lefevre just does beat the throw, and the Dodgers lead 2-1. to one. So Lefevre pulls one over a leaping Tony Perez to break the tie. Here's Willie Crawford now. Dodgers leading 2-1 to one and hold everything. Sparky Anderson going out to the mound. Dillingham starting to tire, perhaps. That's the main concern for each manager, the stamina of the pitchers. Dillingham has not zipped too many good fastballs, and we'll see if they go to the bullpen right now. They want Tom Hall to be brought in to pitch to Willie Crawford. So Hall, a hard-throwing left-hander, will be brought in to pick up for Jack Dillingham, who has turned in a great effort and just ran out of gas here in the sixth inning. The Dodgers beat Billingham 2-1 to one the last game last year. And they're leading him 2-1 to one on the first game this year. Willie Crawford is due to hit. And he goes back into the dugout to get another bat. So we have time to remind you that here's Danny Goodman's early season souvenir bargain package, all for $2, including postage. You get a Dodger yearbook, a Dodger way to play baseball book, insignia decals of all clubs in the National League, and 12 pennants of National League teams as well. Send your orders to Danny Goodman at Dodger Stadium. Enclose your name and address and $2. Tom Hall is a kid who can really throw hard. Paul is from North Carolina, but makes his home in Riverside. He's an even six, and he doesn't have to worry about a diet. Six feet, 150 pounds. Four and seven with Minnesota, but a fine ERA of 3.3. So Tom Hall is a fellow with a great strikeout ratio. In 130 innings with Minnesota last year, he struck out 137. The year before, in 155 innings, he struck out 184. So you just know he can fire the ball, and the first guy to take a look at him is going to be Willie Crawford. So Tom Hall, recently acquired in another deal made by Bob Housem, and he brought in right now one skinny guy for another, Wayne Granger, who is pencil thin, was sent to Minnesota. Hall delivers, and it's a strike, a throw down to second base, not in time. Lefevre back in head first. But Bench was after him, and Jimmy just did make it. Hall leans in to get a sign. Now Tom straightens up. Comes back to Crawford, and as a ground ball hit down to Joe Morgan, he short hops it and flips to Perez. Dodgers on doubles by Buckner and Lefevre get a run, leave a man. At the end of five and a half innings, Dodgers two, Reds one. If you're the cook of the family, Farmer John has a delicious every other Thursday plan for you. He suggests that you make every other Thursday an open date in your tiresome cooking schedule. Instead of going through all the preparations of a hot dinner, take it easy and enjoy a cool, quick-to-fix smorgasbord spread featuring his Farmer John luncheon meats. If you'd rather make it every other Tuesday or any other any day, well, that's all right with Farmer John, and he doesn't care which of his luscious luncheon meats you choose, sliced cooked ham, all meat bologna, Italian cotto salami, chopped ham roll, Braunschweiger, or liverwurst. All are made with finest, freshest eastern corn-fed pork and fresh, lean, juicy, homegrown beef. What's more, Farmer John goes to extra expense to make them extra flavorsome, too. Instead of using artificial or synthetic seasonings, he seasons his luncheon meats with costly natural herbs and spices. So how about it? Smorgasbord supper with Farmer John luncheon meats. Next time you shop, look for the farmer in the deli. Bottom of the sixth inning at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, and the Dodgers holding on to a tough two-to-one lead now. They led one nothing in the first inning, but the Reds caught them on Menke's home run, and they just picked up a run in the top of the sixth. Now in the bottom half, Pete Rose, Joe Morgan, and Bobby Tolan in that order. Don Sutton has allowed three hits, a bloop double by Rose, a bunt single by Rose, and a home run by Menke. And the double might very well have been caught, 
A little fly ball that went off Willie Crawford's glove. Of course, from here on in, Sutton now will be examined very closely as to just how long he can keep pitching. Rose, two for two. Grabarkowitz plays him in on the rug. And Sutton's first pitch, fastball for a strike. Don has four strikeouts, getting Billingham twice. Don right back with a fastball, and that's over. Strike two, the count to Pete Rose. The lights have been on since the start of the ballgame. Lead gray skies, but that's okay. Sutton, both feet on the rubber, checking with Duke Sims. And Rose in that familiar crouch of his waiting at the plate. The strike two pitch on the way. Fastball fouled away. And wait a minute. Pete Rose is apparently hit by the pitch. He started to swing and the ball hit his hand. And Pete Rose has been... Now they say it's going to be Duke Sims who did it. At first we thought the pitch hit Rose. And now Tommy Gorman points to Sims. On a two-strike pitch, Duke Sims catches interference, and Rose is awarded first base. Boy, there's a big break. So the tying run at first base on a catcher's interference play. Now Joe Morgan will be the batter. Jim Brewer goes down to the Dodger bullpen to get ready, and Morgan takes a strike. So on no balls, two strikes. Catches interference charge to Duke Sims. And Pete Rose representing the tying run is at first base. Brewer loosening up in the pen. Sutton at the belt. A backward glance at Pete Rose. Now he works Morgan and that slice foul into the crowd over the Dodger dugout. And the count 0-2. Balls and two strikes to Joe Morgan. The so Sutton has thrown four strikes, but there's a man at first base and nobody out. The strike two pitch to little Joe is high. Ball one. One and two. The newest Dodger of them all, he officially joined them last night. Dick Beats down in the bullpen, warming up Jim Brewer. One and two, the count of Joe Morgan. Bobby Tolan on deck, so they've got a lot of speed going here. Throw to first base to drive Rose back. Dodgers two, Reds one, opening day. Sutton watching a dancing Rose. Now comes to little Joe, low, and the count, two balls and two strikes. Morgan, left-hand hitting second baseman. At 5-7, he doesn't give you too much of a strike zone. Sutton leans in, reads Sims. Now Don straightens up, set at the belt. And the 2-2 fastball is outside. Ball three. Well, he odds very much now that Rose will be going three and two. Morgan struck out only 50 times all last year. Two to one, Dodgers, bottom of the sixth. Rose awarded first base on catcher's interference with the count 0-2. And, and now Morgan up there, 3-2. and two. Sutton set, looks over at Rose. Pete goes, and the fastball is way outside, ball four. And Sutton now is in a mess. Walter Alston going out. You have Bobby Tolan, a left-hand hitter, coming up. Then Johnny Bench and Tony Perez. Two on, nobody out, and Austin wants to talk to Sutton. The Don losing two hitters when he had them 0 2. Rose on catches interference and then walking Joe Morgan. It's his first walk of the day. Austin wants to find out how Sutton he is. Of course, he can tell just from watching his stuff whether he still has the stamina and good velocity. Now he wants to talk to his infield. Walter has told his boys what he wants them to do. And Bobby Tolan will be coming out. 
Tolan was aboard on a fielder's choice when he hit the ball back to Sutton and Rose was out at the plate. Then last time up, Bobby struck out. The first question is, Tolan has speed, Rose and Morgan with great speed. And if Bobby bunts, what will they try to do? We'll see the Dodger defense. They pull up Grabarkowitz and Buckner. Lefevre and Wills come up a step and Tolan checks in at the plate. Two to one Dodgers, bottom of the sixth inning, but nobody out and the Reds have to avoid. The Dodger pickoff play is to Lefevre, not in time to get Rose. As Grabarkowitz raced in and Wills raced to cover third. So the Dodgers showed a defensive maneuver that time. We'll see what they do on this pitch now. Sutton did not come to the plate. Don looks at second base, a dancing rose. The pitch to Tolan, he takes outside, and he was not around to bunt. Bobby had that bat cocked. One ball and no strikes. Normally, when a pitcher begins to tire... He begins to have trouble keeping the ball down, and he has difficulty throwing strikes. One and all the count. Sutton at the belt comes right back with a breaking ball, a full swing and a miss, and the count one and one. Tolan, with his fine speed, might very well be worth the risk of a double play. So Sparky Anderson has him swinging away so far, and Buckner is convinced he goes back to a normal depth. Manny Mota and Bobby Valentine begin to play catch. Uh, we might have another change in the outfield. Curveball is rolled up along first base foul. And the count one and two. So it's the third consecutive hitter where Sutton has two strikes, but he's lost the other two. Mota throws better than Frank Robinson. So that's no doubt why... Manny is loosening up in the Dodger bullpen. One and two, the count to Bobby Tolan. Sutton in a jam, nobody out. Rose at second base. Morgan at first. Two to one, Dodgers in the sixth inning. Tolan, left-hand hitter, bat held high in the air. Sutton ready, checking Rose. Comes to the plate, fastball, strike three, called. At the knees, Bobby walks away. Let's duck in a break. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. And in Phoenix, Arizona, this is KTAR. It's now 2 o'clock. Johnny Bench. So with two strikes, Sutton got a knee-high fastball over the plate to get his fifth strike out of the game. Now one out and Johnny Bench at the plate. Bench has grounded out twice to the right side. All spring long, he was trying to go to right field. Fastball is jammed, popped it up. Rebarkowitz and Sutton, and Sutton makes the catch on the infield fly rule, and the crowd gets on Johnny Bench. Two down, runners at first and second, and now Tony Perez, the batter. Duke Sims out to talk to Don Sutton. Rose awarded first base on catches and deterrence, then Joe Morgan walked. He struck out Bobby Tolan, and he has just jammed Johnny Bench to get him to pop up. And that brings up Tony Perez, who struck out and grounded to third. Perez, right hand hitting first baseman and a dandy. And Sutton, hands on his knees, reading Sims. Now Don straightens up, looks back at Pete Rose, checks him again, and the pitch to Perez in the dirt, smothered nicely by Sims, and the count one ball and no strike. One and all the count. Dodgers leading 2-1 to one here in the sixth inning. Tomorrow it'll be Al Downing and Gary Nolan. And then the Dodgers will push on to Atlanta. Perez waiting at the plate. Pumping Ed Wood back and forth. Sutton straightens up. Another look at Rose out at second base. Don works the plate. Fastball in there for a strike. 
inside part of the plate, and Perez was giving on it a little. And the count, one ball and one strike. Dodger bullpen is crowded. Manny Mota loosening up along with Jim Brewer. Sutton reading Duke Sims. Rose at second, Morgan at first. Both men can fly, both men can steal. One and one to Tony Perez. Sutton checking, and Don delivers. Fastball way inside, almost hit him. Ball two. On deck is Dennis Menke, who homered in the second inning for Cincinnati's only run. Dodgers leading two to one. Duke Sims wigwagging signs out to the mound. The outfield deep and fanned out straight away on Perez. Sutton ready and comes back to him. Fastball popped in the air in foul ground. Duke Sims settles underneath it and makes the catch. And boy, what a bit of pitching by Don Sutton to get Tolan, Bench, and Perez. And the crowd angry that the hitters were overpowered in the clutch. No runs, no hits, two left. Jerry Doggett will be along in one minute. And the score at the end of six, Dodgers two, Reds one. Touch. That exciting inning there in the sixth inning. The Dodgers got a run, and then Sutton did a real tight rope act to get him out. Here we go to the seventh inning, and the Dodgers now will have Duke Sims, Billy Grabarkowitz, and Don Sutton to replace to uh, face the new left-hander, Tommy Hall, who came in and got Willie Crawford for the last out in the sixth. A good ball game going here under gray skies in Cincinnati, but apparently the threat of rain has gone by now. We have an official ball game in here for our opening day in Cincinnati. Tom Hall to pitch to Duke Sims, who was on on an error. Grounded out. So Duke is 0 for 2. He is about 6 or 8 pounds underweight right now. Curve is in there for a strike, 0 and 1. Sims, of course, had to leave the club in Florida and come back to Los Angeles because of the emphysema or the breathing difficulty that he had. And he took off 5 or 6 pounds in the transition. So he's down to just a little over the 200 mark. <laughs> One, one ball, one strike. Sims facing Hall, a Riverside youngster. Came over from the Minnesota Twins last year. Fastball high. He's a strike. Hey, Two balls and one strike now. The count to Duke Sims. Grabarkowitz do next, then Don Sutton. Dodgers leading the Reds 2-1. to one. The Dodgers won four, lost five in this ballpark last year. They beat the Reds seven out of nine in Los Angeles. Same two tomorrow. There's a curve high, ball three, and it's a 3-1 count. Warm-up time tomorrow will be 15 minutes earlier than today, 10.55, Al Downing against Gary Nolan. The Dodgers will start Bill Singer on Monday night in Atlanta, and he will be opposed by Stone. There's a drive to right field, down in the corner, well hit, going, going, it is home run for Duke Sims. So the Duker hit one in the seats. And the Dodgers lead now 3-1. So for Duke Sims, the honor of the first Dodger home run of the year. And he hit it off a left-hander. So Slim, uh, Sims slams one upstairs. And the Dodgers now have a little more breathing room as Billy Grabarkowitz comes up. Sims last year hit six home runs. He had 23 the year before at Cleveland. So he muscles one into the mezzanine deck here to give the Dodgers another run. Sims, of course, had a hot finish to the season, and he gets a warm welcome on the bench. Well, the guys are all over him down there when he comes back to the dugout. Next pitch to Billy is high for a ball, and the count goes one and one. We're in the seventh inning. The Dodgers leading now 3-1 over the Reds in opening day here at Cincinnati. Tom Hall to the windup and the pitch. Fly ball to center field, well hit. Back for this one goes Tolan. He's almost at the edge of the carpet. Under it now makes the catch for the out. So the Barker, it's a long out to center. That brings on Don Sutton. And on the home run, for Duke Sims will give away a $10 book of Union All Auto Script to Duke and a $10 book to the Salvation Army Day Nursery, 140 North Eastman Avenue in Los Angeles. So Sims chips in with our first Union All Script of the year. Here's the pitch on the way to Sutton. High for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Billingham was the starter. Worked five and two-third innings. Came out in the sixth after giving up two doubles to Buckner and Lefevre. And Sutton got out of a mighty tough spot in the sixth. Fastball is a strike, and it is one and one. One ball, one strike. Seventh inning, Sutton at bat. He's 0 for 2. 
a good ball game here for openers. Curve is outside, corner for a strike, and it's a one ball, two strike count now to Don Sutton. So Sims, who had a longer layoff than most of the players because he had to miss the last week or so of spring training, comes back sharp as a looper hit the right field a base hit as Sutton drills one to right. Geronimo down in his knee to block it, brings it back in, and Sutton singles. And the Dodgers now have picked up two, four, seven hits. And four of those have been for extra bases as Maury Wills comes to bat. And Sutton gets the windbreaker from first base coach Jim Gilliam. In the third base lines, Danny Ozai. The Dodger coaches staff, of course, the same. Roy Hartsfield on the bench. Carol Berenger in the bullpen and Red Adams handling the pitching staff. Manager Walter Austin came home early to nearby Dartown because of the serious illness of his father, who is seriously ill in Dartown. Of course, it's kind of a sad mission for the skipper. Will swings at a high fastball, strike one. Oh, and one the count. We're in the seventh inning of the game, and the Dodgers lead it three to one. Sutton is on first base with a single to right field, one out. And now Hall, left-hander, looks again. Pitch on the way. Wills takes a curve that's high. One ball, one strike. Hall is about six feet tall, 155 pounds. So he's kind of slender. Kind of on the skinny side, as was Wayne Granger, who was swapped away for Hall to the Twins. 1-1 pitch to Maury. Foul back out of play. And it's a one and two count. I say one thing, Hall can throw pretty hard. He brings it in there pretty good. On the scoreboard, Pittsburgh, New York. We have no report on that game. Not on our ticker. Philadelphia, Chicago. 2-2. They're playing at Chicago in the seventh inning. 2-1 make it. Philadelphia now leads. Carlton against Jenkins replaced by hands. Montreal leads St. Louis at St. Louis. 2-0 through six innings of play. Night action, San Francisco at Houston, Atlanta at San Diego. New York at Baltimore postponed because of wet grounds. It is four to one. Milwaukee leads Cleveland at Cleveland in the eighth. There's a bouncer up the first baseline. Off the mound comes Hall to make the play in time and on the out. Sutton goes to second. So Wills grounds out. Pitcher to first. And the runner Sutton advances on the out. So two down and here's Buckner coming up. Well, only Union 76 can give your car certified service. In the New York-Pittsburgh game at the end of six and a half innings, New York leads by a score of four to nothing. Seaver replaced by McGraw in the seventh inning and Ellis going for the Pirates. We had a delay on the report on that way because of a power failure. We now get a score in on Western Union. Willie Davis, uh, rather Buckner at bat, Willie Davis on deck. Buckner takes high for a ball, one ball and no strikes, facing Hall. Buckner has won today, a double that led to a run in the sixth inning. Don Sutton on second base, and Hall pitching to Buckner. Breaking ball for a strike, and it's a 1-1 count. Boston 2, Detroit 2, and that's at the end of six innings of play. Patton against Lulich. No score, Chicago at Kansas City through six innings of play. Minnesota Oakland will be later on this afternoon, and tonight at Anaheim, the Angels will entertain Texas. High fastball to Buckner. Down he goes. And Buckner, the last time he had to go down, got up and doubled. Now he has a 2-1 count against Hall. And he gets up again. In the game at Anaheim, it'll be Bosman for Texas and Messersmith for the Angels. And he won 20 last year. Bosman won 12. 2-1 two to Buckner. Pitch on the way. Swung on him. Missed. 2-2. Two two. It is 3-1 here. The Dodgers are leading the Reds in the seventh inning. A well-played ball game. We've had one error on each side. One, the error against the Dodgers charged on Sims for tipping Rose's bat. Catcher's interference. Now Buckner waiting 2-2. Ground ball back to the pitcher. One bounce. Go to first in the dirt. Dropped by Perez and he's safe. So Hall threw the ball on a bounce. And Buckner is safe. Error on the throw by Tom Hall on a routine play. He just bounced it in the dirt for an error. And the Dodgers now have a break. They're going to try to cash in as Sutton goes to third on the error. Buckner is on first. And here's Davis at bat. He has doubled, lined out to right on a beautiful catch, and popped up. So Willie Davis at bat, one for three now, trying to cash in the break. All pitching to Davis. A swing and a miss at a breaking ball, strike one. 
He took a little off that time. Willie appeared to be in front of it. The Red fans have been a little unhappy today. Willie a half swing, but he held up. Ball one, strike one. And on an appeal play, the third base umpire gets to call his first play of the new National League career for him, Frank Pulley. An appeal by the Reds. Gorman asked the third base umpire, and he said a strike. So it's a 1-1 count to Davis. Pitch on the way. Fly ball into right field. Geronimo coming up. He's there. He has it. And the inning is over. So Davis flies to right. The Dodgers show one run. Two hits. There was an error and two left. And the score at the end of six and a half. The Dodgers three, and the Reds have one. Friends, the Dodgers have set some pretty impressive records since they've been in Los Angeles. Sandy Koufax firing four no-hitters, including a perfect game in four years. Don Drysdale hurling 58 and two-thirds consecutive innings of scoreless baseball. And there was Maury Wills breaking the immortal Ty Cobb stolen base record at 96. And who knows, maybe this year we'll see the Dodgers make even more baseball history. And we hope maybe you'll see it being made with an ice-cold Olympia beer in your hand. You see, Olympia is the light beer that uses only a select hops and choice barley malt. They age their beer long enough, too, to make it taste just right. And, of course, Olympia is brewed from the naturally pure artesian water of Tumwater, Washington. So this is the year. When you're watching the Dodgers try to break some more baseball records, you'll be breaking open some Olympia beer for yourself. And above all, remember, it's the water that makes it Olympia. Crowd standing for the seventh inning stretch here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati is Don Sutton. Gets ready to go to work here after a very tight situation in the sixth inning. Don will start off against Menke, Geronimo, and Concepcion, and then if anybody gets on, we'll probably have a hitter for the pitcher. Friends, a reminder, two tickets for the price of one, Monday night, May 1st, the Dodgers and the Phillies, for information in an application blank, check sport pages on one of these papers, South Bay Daily Breeze, Pomona Progress Bulletin, the Valley News and Green Sheets, Dodgers, Phillies, May 1st, tickets sold by mail on a two-for-one basis, as many as you like. And don't forget, Cap Night, Dodgers Stadium, April 28th, Dodgers and the Mets, a free cap for everyone at Dodgers Stadium, youngsters and adults as well. Here's Menke at bat. He had a home run his first time up. The pitch from Sutton bounced foul to the Dodger dugout. And it is strike one. Here the Dodgers open it up, don't forget, next Friday night at home against San Diego. So their delayed opener against San Diego Padres after the Dodgers had their first six games at home voiced, uh, wiped off the schedule. It's a pop foul behind the plate. Might be a play. Sims comes back near the screen, and it's over the screen, out of play. <laughs> Strike two, count to Menke. Leading it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning is one for two in the game. A home run and a ground out. Now Don Sutton rubs off a sign from Duke Sims. Here's the windup and the pitch on the way. Curve is strike three called. Gets away from Sims. It ticked the bat. Foul tip as Menke held up. The ball ticked the bat. Popped off Sims' glove. Sims quickly raced after the ball, but umpire Gorman said no nope, foul ball. So he throws a new ball out to Sutton. The Reds and the Dodgers. And, of course, opening day in Cincinnati has been an annual event for 88 years. This is the 88th opening day. The old Cincinnati Red Stockings. 0-2 count to Dennis Menke. Now the pitch on the way. Curve is a little low for a ball. One and two. One ball, two strikes. We have McLaughlin in the bullpen, a right-hander. We also have another pitcher down there we can't see. So we might have a hitter if they get to the pitcher spot in this inning. Sparky Anderson, of course, in his third year now as manager of the Reds, has a foul out of play on the first base side down in the stands. Bounces all the way around and almost back onto the field. One ball, two strikes to Menke. The Dodgers leading three to one. 
Three hits allowed by Don Sutton. Seven hits for the Dodgers against two Cincinnati pitchers. Five against Billingham, two against Hall. Sims a home run for one of the runs. Robinson drove in a run. Lefevre drove in a run. Fastball is high, ball two, and it's a 2-2 count. Sutton was in trouble in the sixth inning after the catcher's interference in a walk, but then he got Tolan, Bench, and Perez. A strikeout and two pop-ups. There's a bouncing ball foul off the third base side. All right, two and two to Menke. Sutton taking a little time out there now. Bottom of the seventh inning. Here's the windup and the pitch on the way. Bounce toward third near the line. It is a foul ball. Grabarkowitz over to play it back in. So Menke's still up there with a 2-2 count. And he's prolonging the work of Sutton here in this inning, starting it off in the bottom of the seventh. George Sugar coaching at first base. Alex Grammas on the third base side for the Reds. A 2-2 count. Sutton ready. Wines delivers. Fastball inside. And now he's gone all the way with him. He had him 0-2. But the battle has continued. And now it goes to a 3-2 count. Three balls. Two strikes. Sutton. Eyes Sims for a sign, trying to keep the leadoff man off base here. It's a ground ball to third. Knocked down by Grabarkowitz into foul territory, and Menke is on. And it'll be a third baseman error. Grabarkowitz can't handle that ground ball by Menke. So the Dodgers have their second error of the game. The errors are now even, and here is Geronimo coming up. So for the second straight time now, an error has started the inning. Brewer goes back to the Dodger bullpen to warm up with Dick Deets. The ball actually bounced up and hit Grabarkowitz in the chest. He was a little bit handcuffed by it. But it was hit sharply. Had he been able to knock it down in front of him, he would have had a play. All right, Geronimo up. The Dodgers have a two-run edge. That takes the butt away for the moment. Concepcion is on deck to pitch to the hitter. Fast ball high, ball one. So Sutton now trying to wade through another one here. He's getting down toward the tail end of the batting order, and he's trying to keep these guys from hurting him before the big ones get up there. Geronimo, Concepcion, then the pitcher, then Rose, and Morgan. And that's where the trouble begins when you get to the top of the order. Now the pitch. Ground ball out towards Lefevre. Into second one. Will throw to first. Double play. So the Dodgers get the double play from Speedy Geronimo as he hit a tailor-made ball right to Lefevre. He flipped to Wills and Wills. His sore arm apparently gets a little better. Turned the double play, and that really gives Sutton a big lift. So there are two down now with Concepcion coming on. Olympia Beer, our caps off to the Dodgers as they begin another season. Olympia, it's the water. Two away, the DP, LaFever to Wills to Buckner. Concepcion, the batter, has grounded out twice. Back to the pitcher and down to shortstop. Davies, slender right-hand hitter. Sutton's pitch. Fastball is low, ball one. On deck is Bernie Carbo. He would serve as a pinch hitter for Hall should Concepcion get on base. Three to one, the Dodgers lead. We're in the seventh inning. Sutton delivers. Fastball, that's low. Two balls and no strikes. Don trying to move the ball in and out. The last pitch a little bit inside and down. Two nothing the count. All right, Don Sutton checking signs again. Pitch on the way. Popped up into center field. Willie Davis right there. In a step or two, pops the glove, waits, and he has it. Side retired. So they're all gone in the seventh. No runs, no hits, an error, and none left. Score at the end of seven. Dodgers three, and the Reds have one. Friends, if you want to know how any player or team is likely to perform, you look at the record. Well, that's how you find out what to expect. And I suggest that if you haven't tried the gasoline at a Union 76 station, you look at their record. It's a long and spirited one. They've been helping motorists and selling fine gasoline since 1913. Of course, a lot has changed in all those years. The cars we drive and the roads we drive on. And Union Oil's gasolines have changed, too. Take Super 76, for example. 
It's made the way all union gasolines are made, to help your car go with the spirit. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means you'll get fast starting, quick warm-ups, spirited performance from Super 76. Now, if that sounds like good gasoline to you, you're right. Why don't you give Super 76 a try? Union 76 has been helping people get the most from their cars for a long time, and they'll do the same for you. It's not just experience that counts, it's spirit. The spirit of 76 lives at Union Oil. Well, we go along into the eighth inning good ball game opening day in Cincinnati. The Dodgers lead the Reds by a count of 3-1. to one. Robinson, Lefevre, Crawford now will be on here in the eighth inning. Brewer continues to warm in the Dodger bullpen. Sutton pitched to only three men in the seventh inning. Here's Robinson at bat. He drove in a run with a single first time up. Fly deep to center and struck out. So Robbie's had one for three today, coming back home to Cincinnati. Tom Hall to the windup. The pitch on the way to Robbie. Curve is a strike 0-1. Robinson and Hall, of course, not strangers to one another. They were against each other in the American League last year. One strike count. Robinson waiting. Stands straight up over that plate. Fastball is high, and it's a 1-1 count. The Reds, three hits. The Dodgers have seven, including a home run by Sims and doubles by Buckner, Davis, Lefevre. Singles by Robinson, Crawford, and Sutton. As a looper hit the second base, one bounce to Morgan. Up with it, little Joe throws to first. Robinson is out, one away in the eighth inning. So one down and Lefevre, the batter, he doubled into right field to break up the tie in the sixth inning. His double drove home Billy Buckner, who had doubled into the left field corner. Lefevre waiting. Here's the pitch on the way. Foul back up in the screen. And it's strike one. 0-1 the count. Eighth inning. Dodgers three runs, seven hits. Reds one run, three hits. Each side, two errors. Now all checking signs. With Fever batting from the right side now against the left-hander. Pops it up. Foul back of the plate. That'll carry to the level above us. And the count stays. Strike two. Nothing and two the count to Lefevre. So he's behind the pitcher. Manny Mota takes off a jacket and goes down to the bullpen to warm up. Curveball is over, and Lefevre is called out on strikes. That's the first strikeout for Hall. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. And in Phoenix, this is KTAR. It's 28 minutes past 2. Lucky Lawrence with music right after the ball game. Willie Crawford, the batter now. Bully has one for three, a single. Facing left-hander Tom Hall for the second time. Pitch on the way from Hall. Curveball is over for a strike. 0-1 to Crawford. On deck, Duke Sims and then Billy Grabarkowitz. The Dodgers leading 3-1 over the Reds. We're in the eighth inning. Paper airplane goes sailing all the way onto the playing field. The time saw now is out and makes a landing yacht in front of home plate. That's about the biggest cheer we've had today from the Red fans as somebody made that air- airplane go all the way out on the playing field. There have been a few goos. They've been a little unhappy at the event so far, but of course the game is not over yet. Crawford takes a fastball too high, 1-1. A ball and a strike to Crawford. Two outs here in the eighth inning. Next pitch is fouled away, and it goes to a one-ball, two-strike count. One and two. Half swing, and he checked in time. Ball two. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Nobody on. A swing and a miss. Strike three. Crawford goes down on strikes, and so Hall now does his thing, getting two strikeouts in the inning. Side retired. The Dodgers out in order, and so at the end of seven and a half innings of play, the score... Dodgers 3, Reds 1. Some of the fun of watching a ball game at Dodger Stadium is munching on a Farmer John Dodger dog. Some of the fun of listening to a game at home is the same thing. 
Yes, you can get Farmer John Dodger dogs in your market, but they're called extra long Farmer John wieners. And extra long they are. A whopping big 10 inches of all meat and the best meat. Extra long Farmer John wieners are the same as regular size Farmer John wieners, except you get more of a good thing. And both kinds are delectably different in flavor than any others. Farmer John smokes his wieners over real smoke from native western wood to give a wonderful western flavor to every all-meat morsel. He seasons them with the best, too, only natural herbs and spices. So come to the ballpark and enjoy Farmer John Dodger Dogs. Or stay at home, enjoy regular or extra-long Farmer John wieners as you listen to the ball game. The main thing is that a baseball game isn't the same without a hot dog. And a hot dog isn't the same without a Farmer John wiener bundled in the bun. If you're a camera fan, here's a date to check on your baseball list. Camera Day Dodger Stadium being sponsored by the Dodgers and the Master Photo Dealers and Finishing Association. The date will be June the 11th. We'll tell you about uh, some of the big events coming up on that one later on. Final score is in. Milwaukee beat Cleveland today 5-1. to one. Parsons the winner and Gaylord Perry was the loser. They had 22,000 at Cleveland today. That's our first final score. The Dodgers now make some changes. Manny Moda is in left field. And Jim Brewer will be the pitcher. So the Dodgers make those two changes. Sutton gave it seven strong innings and will leave now for Brewer. Comes in here in the bottom of the eighth to pitch first to a pinch hitter. Julian Javier, who taps one foul at the plate. So Javier bats for Hall in the eighth. And Brewer is the new pitcher. Replacing Sutton. And for Don, a very fine outing. Sutton worked seven innings, allowed one run, and three hits. Struck out five and walked one. Had two long innings in the sixth and the seventh, so the Dodgers apparently felt that they'd bring in Brewer a fresh pitcher. And now they have left-handers Osteen and John working in the bullpen behind him. The Rickert make it. Strike two, the count. Here's Brewer's pitch on the way. Tap to the second base side. The favor coming quickly makes his play. He got him. So a little roller by Javier and Julius thrown out by Lefevre. And here's Pete Rose now coming up. Rose with Morgan to follow. Pete will turn around and bat from the right side against Brewer. Left-hander Brewer on the mound, left-handers Rickard, and John in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Now the pitch, fastball, foul back upstairs. Strike one count to Rose. Rose today has a double, a bunt single, and he was on on catcher's interference, so he is two for two in the game. Bottom of the eighth inning. On the scoreboard, Philadelphia now leads the Cubs. Four to two at Chicago, playing in the ninth inning. It's a fly ball to right field. Coming up to Robinson. Knee-high catch for the up. So Rose lines to right to Robinson. Two down, and the batter will be Joe Morgan. He has a walk and a fly out on the ground out. At New York, it is four to nothing. The New York Mets leading Pittsburgh in the eighth inning. A Seaver is working against Ellis. It is three to two. Montreal over St. Louis at St. Louis. Stoneman. Gibson knocked out. The Giants will be at Houston, Atlanta at San Diego, American League, New York, Baltimore rained out. Milwaukee beat Cleveland 5-1. to one. It is 3-2. Detroit over Boston in the 8th. No score. Chicago, Kansas City in the 8th. Minnesota, Oakland just getting underway. Bly Levin against Holtzman and Texas at California. That's tonight at Anaheim. A bit of a drizzle coming down now as we play here in the 8th inning. Well, when we came to the ballpark a few hours ago, we would have bet a lot of money that this game would at least have been interrupted by rain but it does not now the pitch on the way to Morgan a fly ball to right field Robinson back a step or two waiting under it he's there Robbie has it side retired so they're out in order in the eighth inning three up and three down we've gone through eight here on opening day at Cincinnati Vince Scully with more play when we go to the ninth the score Dodgers three the Reds one
we don't expect you to remember everything we tell you about the Toyota Corolla 1200 sedan. We don't expect you to remember the manufacturer's suggested retail price, which is $1,956, plus freight local taxes, dealer prep, and options. We don't expect you to remember all the things that are included in the price as standard equipment. Things like front disc brakes, white walls, tinted glass, and a fresh air heater. Things like a four-speed transmission, reclining bucket seats, and nylon carpeting. We don't expect you to remember everything that's included for the $1,956. Just remember, our standard equipment list is long, our price is low, and our name is Toyota. And that's enough to remember. See your nearby Toyota dealer. Get your hands on a Toyota you'll never let go. As we go to the ninth inning from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, it now becomes a simulcast, so we ask you folks watching on television to bear with the extra chatter. Light rain coming down. The folks, however, were well prepared for it. Umbrellas have popped open, and we go to the ninth inning. Duke Sims will start it off, followed by Billy Gravarkowitz and Manny Mota, and right-hander Jim McLaughlin is on the mound. He'll be the third Reds pitcher. The first pitch to Duke misses ball one. Sims is grounded out aboard on an error and then buzzed a line drive home run into the seats in the seventh inning. The paid attendance night, it's a fine crowd considering how black and gray it's been and rainy and drizzly. Almost 38,000. The pitch to the Duke, a strike. One and one. The paid attendance, 37,895. And that is a fine crowd. We've seen Jack Billingham, Tom Hall, and now Jim McLaughlin. Curveball fouled away over near the Cincinnati dugout, and the count one and two. If you would like to know about the Reds in the ninth inning, their last time around, they have the heart of the lineup. Bobby Tolan, Johnny Bench, and Tony Perez. So there's no reason to go wandering off. This one is still very much alive. Three to one, Dodgers in the ninth. McLaughlin ready, and the redhead delivers, and as a one-hopper banged right at Joe Morgan, he dropped to his right knee to stay with it and throws him out. So Sims rips one to Morgan, one away, and the batter will be Billy Grabarkowitz. Grabarkowitz grounded to short, hit into a force play, and fly to center, 0 for 3. So Billy Grabarkowitz checking in now against Jim McLaughlin. The Dodgers scored two runs against Billingham, one against Hall. So Billingham is the pitcher of record. The first one at Grabarkowitz is pulled just foul. Just foul. And Danny Ozark thought that had the bag. The freshman umpire, Frank Pooley, just walked down the line a bit. And Grabarkowitz will come back and try it again. Dodgers scored a run in the first. Davis doubled and Frank Robinson singled him home. They scored in the sixth, Buckner doubled, and Lefevre doubled him home. And they scored in the seventh on the home run by Sims. The only Cincinnati run, a home run by Dennis Menke back in the second inning. The strike one pitch to Grabarkowitz is a ground ball wide to third. Gloved by Menke, who flips to Perez. Two down in the ninth inning. Final score, Philadelphia and Steve Carlton beat the Chicago Cubs 4-2. to two. Bill Hands, the losing pitcher... Hands lost in relief. Jenkins had started, and the Phillies won it with two runs in the ninth inning. That was at Chicago. Here's Manny Mota. Mota hitting ninth. He hit 381 against Cincinnati last year. McLaughlin's first one, a high chopper over the plate. Tough play for little Joe. He goes up in the air, then throws and gets him. Fine play by Joe Morgan. And a high chopper hit his way. And the Dodgers are gone in order. The last seven have been retired. And the score at the end of eight and a half innings, Dodgers three, Reds one. Holy, 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 it's the water of that makes it holy beer. It's the water and the lot of that makes Olympia Such a special beer That's Olympia 
Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, an opening day, the 88th opening day in the history of the Cincinnati Reds. And for the Dodgers, leading 3-1, to one, they will be facing Bobby Tolan, Johnny Bench, and Tony Perez. Very light sprinkle has hardly dampened the field, nor the enthusiasm. Half swing for Tolan, tied up on a fastball for a strike. Bobby aboard on a fielder's choice in the first inning, struck out in the third and again in the sixth. Jim Brewer asked to pitch the last two innings for Don Sutton. Got the side out in the eighth, and now Jimmy is in the ninth. Brewer comes back with a screwball, swung on and missed. 0-2 oh the count to Bobby Tolan. Tolan spent all last year on the disabled list. He's a big gun for them. Johnny Bench on deck. Strike two pitch on the way. Fastball got him swinging. That's the third time that Bobby has struck out today. But, of course, more than any other player on the field, you can understand his problems. He's been away from this game for a long time. Here is Johnny Bench, and the crowd has really been taking bites out of John all day. That's what happens when you're a glamour boy one year and have a bad next year. And they have really been taking shots at him. Bench today has grounded out twice and popped up. 0 for 3. Brew delivers, and he's laid on a fastball for a strike. Going one. One out, ninth inning. Dodgers leading 3 to 1. Brewer comes right back, 0 1, and a fastball is belted to right center field. Davis and Robinson, and Robinson makes the catch for the out. So Johnny Bench drives it to right center, and Frank Robinson is there to flag it. Two down in the ninth inning. The Reds have not had a hit since a bun single by Pete Rose in the third inning. So the Dodgers have had great pitching today from Don Sutton, and now Jim Brewer trying to get the last six outs, and he's gotten five of them. He's got one to go. Tony Perez struck out, grounded out, and fouled out. Brewer comes to him, and he's late on a fastball. This game, in a sense, has followed what the experts said would happen, that the hitters would be way off in their timing, and apparently so. The strike one pitch to Perez, missing one ball and one strike. The Dodgers, three runs, seven hits, two errors. The Reds, one run, three hits, two errors. And the light drizzle has turned into a rain now. The one-one pitch to Tony Perez, screwball, swung on and missed, one and two. So Brewer trying to lock it up and get the Dodgers off a running in 1972. Don't forget tomorrow, Al Downing and Gary Nolan, radio and TV. That's it. Fastball blew him down. And the last six in a row are retired by Brewer. He strikes out two, seven reds struck out. They had only three hits and did not have a hit since the third inning. So the Dodgers get off and running, beating the Reds three to one. Tomorrow, warm-up time at 10.